Hey everyone, you're listening to InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy, a podcast with tips to make your life easier, covering pop culture, parenting, travel, minimalism, and more. Oh man, honey, I've been working my butt off and I really need a vacation. Well, why don't we just go on vacation then? That sounds like a great idea, but where the heck are we going to go? Actually, why don't we just, why don't you plan the whole trip and then I'll just get on the plane when you, when it's time to go. So like every time. Yes. Like every time. (laughs) Amy, uh, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Um, but Amy, Amy plans all of our vacations. You caught us mid conversation here in the podcast today. Yeah, yeah, we just we were in the middle of our conversation. The microphone spontaneously came on, and we decided this will be a podcast. And we're like, we'll use it. Let's go. Let's use Off it. Off the cutting floor, you know. But in all seriousness, there's a lot of steps, I guess, when it comes to planning a vacation. And uh, a lot of our listeners, I'm sure, you've done a ton of vacations and you plan them on your own. And uh, so I'm sure you have a lot of tips that you can offer back to us and maybe to other listeners, co-listeners, if you want to call but them What that. is this planning a trip you speak of? <laughs> but if, if you do have some tips when you're sort of listening through on any of our podcasts, please share them on our social media. We're yeah. on Facebook, Twitter, Come Instagram. Keep us company. Yeah, keep us company. And just, you know, it's all about sharing the love. And if you've got some unique information or tips that'll work for you, uh, yeah, let us know. But... I love planning vacation. I love planning anything. I'll just, it's part of who I am. You you do, and I will attest to that. And I am. it's so funny because I am the exact opposite of that. I do not enjoy planning vacations. For one, I can't get dates right. I can't. I, I don't know if that's a thing. Which is a very critical part of I planning get, a vacation. I get date-itis. You don't, you don't just you see, know show up to the airport and hope that the plane was booked for the yeah. right date. Or, yeah. you know, there's a lot of... Dates are very important. Yeah. It's like in a, in one of our previous podcasts where I was saying, like, you know, you got to pick the date first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. See, I can't even do that right. Pick the date. <laughs> oh, it's all there's, good. there's two podcasts now to prove it. So. so we're going to do a series of podcasts that just goes from the beginning of, hey, I want to take a vacation through to we're taking a vacation. And the uh, so this this first uh, I guess inaugural episode of that series will be focused on where to go. So we're going to just talk about how to decide where yeah. to go, and we're going to do it like we're actually going to go on a vacation. We have no idea where, but we're gonna we're gonna try and figure it out and do it as a podcast. I don't even. Uh, hopefully, it's interesting. Yeah, I well, think it will be. Well, yes, I hope I hope so too. We want to keep our our listeners interested. That's our ultimate goal. Just maybe to not be bored. And, and maybe you could just follow in our footsteps and take the exact same vacation and then report it back to us. Right, Wouldn't that or be maybe cool? at the exact same time, and we could just you we, know you we could, could come book with the whole us. plane. Who, it would be like a private. We're plane. gonna we're gonna have a contest right now. You could come in vacation with us. You know, <laughs> I don't know. That would be weird. We could get some really really interesting characters, some strangers that perhaps we don't want to go on vacation with uh, yeah okay yeah delete that idea yeah okay delete that idea beep okay we doing that stuff right out of the episode so in all honesty it's been really hard uh you know what it went there too if it weren't for you kids sorry <laughs> recent uh recent weeks our our province we're in saint john new brunswick we've been dealing with a lot of flooding um i know a lot of people have had their homes and you know personal property affected directly by the flooding uh, i've been working on the flood response uh you know here in our city and it's uh it's been a stressful time for a lot of people so even if you know you can't oh, take yeah. a vacation immediately sometimes just being able to think ahead uh to you know to a future time yeah. away can be enough to to give you a little bit of a mental break so we're going to get into that but before we get into that i want to talk a little bit about uh just quickly a recap on our where survey so in oh, the yes. theme of where, I guess we're talking about where to go on vacation, we did a survey about PEI and whether it's in PEI, as in I'm going to be in PEI this weekend, or I'm going on PEI, or... You know uh, what? I think it's, <laughs> if I'm in a plane, I'm going over PEI. <laughs> I'm or just going to go... I'm just going to go around PEI. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against the grain. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's funny because even islanders can agree, so, some, some, you know, not all, but, you know, up whether it's in or on. A friend of ours basically says, well, if you're in PEI, you're in a tunnel, 
underground. Right. Our friend Andrew's from know, like, PEI. Yeah. He grew up uh, grew up in PEI, and he said, "Yeah, there are islanders that believe that you're actually if you're saying in, then you're probably you're in the yeah. ground, um, not in a morbid." Kind but of you way. did. It sounds kind of morbid. But. I can't believe this, but you did some research on this. I did. I know it's unbelievable. Hard to believe <laughs> if you've been listening. I did research. And on how something. Do, how do you even go about researching whether people say in or on PEI? Well, you just become a Google guru as... as uh, you are a Google guru. <laughs> try to say that 10 times. I Google guru. Yeah, yeah see? try to say it once. You sound like Goonie Gugu. <laughs> so our poll, when we polled people, we polled people on Facebook and uh, we had a whopping 32 <clears throat> votes on Facebook. 32 votes. Thank you very much, all 32 of you. <laughs> and three votes on Twitter. Twitter is not nearly as active. Hop on over to our Twitter if you're on our other uh, social media accounts. But yeah, come on. Give us some love, people. Come on. <laughs> but Let us know you're out there. We'll focus on the Facebook with the 32 votes. Uh, 66% of the people said in PEI. Jake, in. did you vote? I hope yes. you voted, Jake. Yeah, shout out to Jake. He's, uh, uh, he's one of our loyal listeners. Yeah, and he's always given us great feedback, particularly on uh, recently on sound quality, which we're always working on. So yeah, hopefully this episode are. is coming in loud and clear. Yeah. Um, whether you're listening in your car, Jake, or whether someone's listening through their headphones, we're hoping you're... Uh, or a transistor on the inside of PEI. There you go. <laughs> transistor Buried radio. Buried within the earth, the red, red, red earth. <laughs> the red clay. So I did a bit of a Google, and there is there are some rules. Some people will say you use on an island if the island is small or uh, not inhabited. Um, Can whereas, there be animals on it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, probably animals, okay. but not inhabited by humans. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, where you would use the word in if the island is big or inhabited. So, grammar phobia actually says you always use on an island unless the island is a country in and of itself. So, maybe Australia. Australia. Or if it's a group of islands. So, I don't know, like the Hawaiian Islands. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. You would use the word in. So, yeah, they're that saying makes sense. if it's a country... Um, it would be in or, uh, but if it's, but you there's know, no, so there's no, like, you know, there's no rules no, there's for a, provinces. No, there's a lot of, there, no, there's no rule, <laughs> not specifically provinces. There's no Canadian version of this law? No, no. I should have probably searched Google, Canadian Google. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the answers that came That's up That's .ca, honey. <laughs> yes, .ca. So, so it's not a definitive answer. There are some different rules that vary, so I don't, I don't know if they're actually rules if they vary. So... Rules were made to be broken. <laughs> Resurrecting the conversation on in versus on. Uh, you know, if you have any more thoughts, let us know on social media. But when I was Googling this, I came across this other uh, discussion group. I think it was on Reddit. It was talking about how we say, I'm going over, um, up, or down. So I, I thought about Halifax. Yeah. Some people will say, I'm going up to Halifax or down I'm to Halifax. I'm going up to Halifax. And how do we decide? And, it, it's usually the way in the direction in which you actually have to travel, is it not? Well, yes. Yeah, so I think the discussion was mostly that in North America, we tend to say if we're going to a more uh, southerly location. Mm. Southerly? Is that, is that right? Southerly Sometimes is a word. Sometimes when you're recording yourself, you start to really second guess all southern, words you Most use. southern, I think, is where you're The recording. most southern. Uh, if you're going to a more southern location, there you go. you're going down to the location. If it's located in a, you know north from you, it, you're going up to it. Um, or you could be looking at actual elevation. So, for instance, if you're in a valley and you're going to a location up a mountain, you would say up. Well, mm-hmm. that, that one seems obvious to me. Interesting. So... There's that, and I think we most people around here use that sort of up and down uh, consistently. But what I found really cool was that in Britain, they actually use it as a status thing. So they consider... Like if, socioeconomic scale kind of thing? Well, it, yes, exactly. Or so status? They, so they will say that if you are going, um, say, away from the capital of a country or away from a university, so like Oxford University, you're going down... And if you're going, say, into a, a city, you would be going up. So, for instance, you're going up. To someone London. would go up to sophisticated London, 
um, but they would go down to the provincial countryside. So they very much use it as a status symbol. That is so strange. I found it fascinating just to know that there's such a variation in the there terms is. of how we use direction and in, in depending well, on. Well, we uh, didn't we use you recently? Well, within the last ten years, I had like a hoopla about whether or not to call uptown or downtown here in St. John. Yes. Well, and, I, and, and there was and a vote about it. I yeah. remember there were mar- there were special martinis made around this. Martinis? Various, I didn't. Oh, yeah. I didn't miss that. I missed that uptown party. Uptown martinis. There was various establishments that had. Wow. I and mean, people had to vote on uptown versus downtown. And I wonder how many people voted for downtown. It's, well, that would be less interesting than to know. uptown apparently. I know because we went uptown. <laughs> let's go uptown. So, but that leads us Neil Young our... would say, "Let's go downtown." Anyway, would he's he? got a song. Why? Yeah, he's got a song. Oh, okay. Let's go downtown. It's quite risque that downtown Neil Young. tonight. That was beautiful. If you change it to uptown, it's not the same. Let's go uptown. Uptown tonight. It just doesn't work. Anyway, get back on schedule, honey. What's with all these? (laughs) Anyway, go ahead. (laughs) So we're going to talk about where. Let's go back to the where. Where on vacation. I actually came across a website called Tripsard. What? Okay, you got to spell that. I know. Because I don't think our listeners are... And I'm going to put it in show notes. I'm going to up my game on the show notes because I realize sometimes I'm referencing websites and it's sort of nobody's sitting there writing them down or maybe you're Rain Man and you're just remembering them from hearing them as we, as we speak about them. But I'll up my game in the show notes. So the various websites I referenced during this episode, I'll make sure I, I put those Send on Send a link, right? Use a yeah, link. Yeah, we'll, have, a hyperlink. It, we'll link. have it in social media and you can check it out. But Tripsard is like short for lizard. Like, so it's trip. Then Z-A-R-D. Gotcha. dot com, and it's one of those quiz type sites. Well, the whole site is just a quiz. You do a quiz and you put in your preferences in terms of your, you know, budget, food, whether you like oh, nature. Oh, really? That's or fascinating. If you hate nature, <laughs> um, you imagine tolerance for crime. How that? far you want to go away? I know tolerance for crime, <laughs> but it's wow. kind of a neat little. I like my crime pretty heavy, so. I mean, it's not a perfect Rio de Janeiro. We all know these, yeah. We gotta oh. get. We've got to get down to South America. Yeah, Brazil. Brazil. Um, <laughs> were you trying to quiz me on where no, Rio no. de Janeiro was? <laughs> no. Yeah, Brazil. I know where it is. Duh. But the quiz is. Uh, you know, it's pro- I'm sure it's not a perfect science. But what I thought was neat is that it generated some results that may have got you thinking of places that weren't on your radar before. So if nothing else, that's kind of a neat place to start. If you have no. Yeah. There's a lot of places that are on our on that aren't on our radar right now so that we want to go to you know check that out tripsard.com they've paid us nothing to tell you about them i just stumbled across them on good old google and you and you 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 would you obviously would send people there because we, we that's what we're doing so it's a good site it's trustworthy and it's something that you know will get you jump started to find out where you may want to go on vacation. Thank you for filling in the air while that's I took what, a drink of my th- Aperol what, Yeah, that was, quite a, that was quite a guzzle. <laughs> I'm just I'm really pleasantly surprised that in our, our city of St. John, New Brunswick, Aperol Spritz is popping up on menus everywhere. Let's do a podcast cheers. Yeah. So you can hear our... our I'll try not to hit the whole mic this yeah, time. Yeah, don't hit the boom. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Was nice. See, that's the crystal. That's actually like an E flat, I think. It's true, though. Aperol Spritz has become uh, more of a well-known drink. Um, Yes, that's right. You had one last night at Port City Royal. Port City Royal. Fantastic. There was uh, one at the Rogue. Restaurant slash bar. Yeah, a few different places. uh, St. John, we have amazing restaurants. If you are, uh, well, if you're local, you are already well aware of our amazing restaurants. But if you're visiting, it is, uh, you know. No shortage of wonderful places to eat. Oh, and they're all within walking distance. And there's so many different, you know, types of food. and Korean food we got couple nights ago or last night it was oh, really yeah, good it was really good from Taki sushi mm. and we have some some really great restaurants so we'll maybe we'll do an episode on restaurants yeah but until that time back to where to go on vacation so i think the first question we all <laughs> ask ourselves when we go on vacation uh, is whether we're going to do a staycation or go internationally and i think that's really based on how much time you have and how much money you have i think there's really a, i think there's that. a i think that there's a really a, a lot to be said about staycations i think they're fantastic i actually sometimes prefer them than going far 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 away well there's a lot of great things you don't have to worry about currency yeah. conversion you can drive there yeah like, it's so you save time so you get more time on your actual vacation Our, we have a beautiful country so and you so get to know great, it there's you great get to places know it. to see you're right chances are you know somebody in the city you're going to visit so you can kind of put in a yeah. you know catch base with some familiar 
spaces while you're away. There's so many great things about a staycation uh, that, you know, it's really an attractive yeah, it Option. is. And you and you don't have to take a lot of time off work either. You can just you can just kind of do it on the weekend. You don't have to take any time off. And interesting though, when you think about expenses there Unless are you work the weekend. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. We should cover all of the different shifts that yeah. <laughs> <That's covered. laughs> Okay, so you could you could work an overnight shift, you could okay, never mind. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. In our, uh, yes. So one thing that we often think of staycations are less expensive, but they can also creep up in expenses. Oh, I yeah. Know that when, you know, you by take the time enough you, of them. If you, take, if you have a flight involved, even if you're staying within your own country, it can get pretty expensive too. Yeah. But, so decide whether you're doing a staycation super close to home or if you're going to take a flight maybe um, you know, to the far coast of your own country or maybe just internationally. That's the first step. The next step is to consider the weather climate. So most people have an idea of when they want to go on vacation. So they should consider, you know, what the weather is at that time of year and what what they want. So some people prefer to travel in a warm climate. Some people would like a cooler climate if they're mm-hmm. doing a lot of sightseeing or hiking and they want. Uh, you know. Don't be an ignorant thrill seeker and go someplace where there's there's really highly likely high it's highly likely that there's going to be a tornado or something or like a you yeah, know don't go to tornado whatever. alley during tornado yeah. alley season that's right yeah <laughs> don't go don't go to tornado alley during tornado alapalooza <laughs> i don't know i, I worked hard I for know. that joke i know you did we both really did hard. i think that they should have a music festival called tornado, tornado alapalooza yeah, where all the tornadoes cool. get together and they wear their like you know ripped t-shirts and stuff and sounds uh, amazing Truly, though, consider the weather. Hurricane season, I think, is probably top on our radar when we're thinking about any uh, trips down south. And just to be aware, you know, June, they say generally June 1st, some will say as early as May, um, till the end of November for hurricane season. And, you know, you probably want to avoid a trip down south during that time. I, oh, yeah. I mean, we've traveled, we went to, actually, we went to Jamaica in July. I tend to think in, in terms of the Caribbean it seems like the majority of the hurricanes are hitting more into September through November. Yeah. But, you know, with climate change, you, you just don't know. I mean, there can always, there's always a possibility of getting a freak storm at any time of year. But, you know, in general, if you know that there's a, a time frame that's bad weather for an area, avoid the region. When we, that time. when we were in Jamaica, though, they were saying that it was cold when we were there. Yes. It was way, way, way warmer like a month earlier. And... It was, it, was still 20, it was it was around, 25 degrees. Yeah, it was between 25 and 30. I mean, we went in July because That's it was our honeymoon. So we, you know, we were married and we wanted to go immediately after our wedding. So that was the reason for the timing. We should but have brought was, parkers for everybody. <laughs> but for us, it was perfect weather. And I mean, really, it's, uh, you know, it's quite, as you get closer to the equator, they tend to have more of a... Uh, I guess the same type of temperature year round. We tend to think always in seasons because of living in Canada that there's a lot of variations that we think summer is going to be hotter everywhere just because it's hotter for us, but that's not always the case. So check out the weather and understand... um, well, I know you understand this because you're very intelligent listeners. Me? But, oh, the <laughs> listeners. But I also I also have to remind myself whenever I'm sort of searching. When you're looking at a, a country, look at where you're staying in the country because the weather can differ by regions, whether you're, you know, up in the mountains, um, depending on the coasts. For instance, uh, you know, if you're on the coast of the Atlantic versus an inland coast, you may be more, you know, subject to winds and storms on the Atlantic side. So look at where you're at within the country um, and, and consider the weather there. Make sure there's no political unrest as well. Yes, I actually have that further on in my notes for covering. Oh, and I, I spoiled it, didn't I? Why don't we just cover that now? Does it, Do they have to be in order? No, they no. don't. No, they don't. Let me just scroll and, and find <laughs> wow. them. Wow, <laughs> I didn't realize we had that much more to talk about. We might have to do a two-parter. <laughs> no, we'll get this covered. All right, I'm let's efficient do it. that way. Oh, you are. Uh, yeah, political unrest. Check government uh, advisories. I, I, I've said this before in other travel tip episodes, but make sure that you're aware of the political climate or anything else that may be going on. I mean, we got things like Brexit, for instance, yeah. is happening. And we just escaped a political crisis in Nicaragua. Yes. Well, I mean, a week earlier or so. You well, know, yeah. Before everything. You never know when. I mean, sometimes things happen and you're not aware, but. Uh, you know, you can't anticipate, but a lot of times there's stuff going on that's, you know, you're not going to be traveling to Venezuela yeah. anytime soon. Um, so check 
again, if we're, we're in Canada, but wherever you're listening from, check your local government websites. And in Canada, you can actually register. They have a registration for Canadians abroad. And it's a free service that just allows the government to let you know if there's an emergency abroad or um, or if there's a you know if there's a personal emergency at home, and they can contact you for any reason. Exactly, it it allows you to receive important information um, before, or during a natural disaster, or if there's some civil unrest going on, the government can contact you and let you know. And it makes them aware of where Canadians are in the world. So it's a pretty big brother thing, though. Well, I'm, jo- I'm joking. I guess, it's good. It's good for them to know. Well, I mean, if you're so, if you're planning a vacation, or even if you're going to live abroad, especially, make sure that the government knows that you're there, because you know, we'll often we'll hear about different things happening in countries and wonder. I wonder if there's, you know, because we have a tendency to wonder if, you know, if there's somebody we know or somebody from our own of country course. in they're a always in location. And on Facebook, they're always saying they're marking themselves safe. So if you weren't aware, let you know just that there is a registration for Canadians abroad. It's super easy to Google. Check out the government website. And when we've gone on extended trips overseas, I've I've done it. It's a simple process. It's free. Just lets them know where you're at. And again, it's you know just it's really all about communication. So you can be aware if something does happen. Um, so now that I'm scrolling back up. Yeah, scroll back up to the next. Jeff's really making me work for this to try to try to stay organized. We talked about the weather. So once you've sort of decided what type of weather you're looking for and what what location may fit that, you know, that particular need or well, what you're going for, I think about your flights. And flights to me are sort of the, the big step because oh. they're usually the major expense piece of any trip. They're just, it's not a cheap thing. So I'll give you a few tips. Recently, I've... Uh, some coworkers mentioned to me about Secret Flying. It's actually a website called Secret Flying. Uh, so Google that. They were, it, you end up booking directly through uh, the various airlines, but it just is a sort of an aggregate of different uh, deals that are going on. Sometimes if there's so it's kind of like errors. Travago for right, airlines. but it's a little bit more. Um, they they actually catch like they're trying to catch uh, errors and fares and oh. things like that. So you have to do a quick turnaround. Uh, sometimes you can, they, I mean, they offer dates that are far out in advance, but usually whatever offers they have are for a limited time. So you, but you can sign up for notifications and things and like Groupon, it's, uh, it's like a combo of the two. Well, no, not really. No, <laughs> I don't think it's like Groupon. You don't, oh, it yeah, no, it's nothing like is, that. Uh, no, no it's, one it's else is trying like to get that. the same flight or anything like that. It's nothing like that at all, honey. Okay. So, so it's like Amazon. <laughs> it's like secretflying.com. Oh, like, oh secretflying.com. <laughs> so check check that one out. Uh, and, uh, you know, Google Flights is an, uh, another way to, to search for flights. I mean, you're, you're probably aware of the various search engine for flights. But what I like to do is I find those major sites often offer uh, special discounted fares out of international cities so, or sorry international airports so they're out of major cities right. because we're not located in toronto or montreal which would be some of our major international airports within canada we always have to find a way to get to that nearest international airport to take advantage of those deals so that's when things like your reward points come in it takes a long time to get enough points built up to in right. order to fly overseas or any significant distance but it's a great time to use those points to just get you to that uh, closest yeah. international airport the biggest airport and then take advantage of the there. major deals from from these types of sites so that's just my little tip around around flights but really in deciding where to go the next step is to then look at what flights are available and how that fits in with your overall budget you're um, really quenching people's thirst for info right now I know. Hopefully, I'm not overdoing. No, it's awesome. All the it's details. good. And, I and think that people are. Oh, where's my? I need to write this down in my, in my notebook. Do people carry out notebooks anymore? No, but we'll do. <laughs> or your notes in your phone. There. Ooh, there I'll you put go. Put them on the show notes on the website. So you've got all the all the websites that I'm mentioning here. But once you land. So if you're you're considering a location, look at the airports that are around that location. You may need to then take either a train or maybe a local. Uh, like Ryanair Bus. is a cheap, cheap airline that you can get once you That's make really when cheap. you make your way overseas. We flew from Spain to. Scotland for seventy five dollars. Seventy five bucks, yeah, that was. Crazy. I mean, that's ridiculous. It was cheap. like it really was like that. That's a whole other podcast. Just the experience of getting on that plane. It was like a, everybody's running. It was oh, bizarre. Yeah. 
It was, yeah, definitely. So as we go through this sort of series of our travel planning, we'll talk about those different those different, different nuances, steps. yeah. Um, yeah, because we've had some interesting experiences. So consider your transportation overall. If you're picking a location that's away from the airport where you're landing to, you might need a, a rental car. Or if you're yeah. staying in a remote location and they don't have, yeah. you know, if you're not close to their, their subway system or the train system. One little tip that I would bring up, too, is uh, know what the fare is to where you're going so that you don't get ripped off in the uh, cab. Because that's yes, happened to me. that's a really good point. That's happened to me many times. And that could be a quick Google search again, just to check to say what's, yeah. Yeah, what's the, you know, average and price being for being aware this, of what's a legitimate like, cab service in that country and how to identify it. Yeah, there's a lot of fake taxis So that you don't stuff. get, like, you know, murdered. Right. No one wants to do That'll that be on in vacation, our especially on vacation. Episode. We'll do an episode just on how not to get murdered. Yes. So... Once you, uh, you know, one when you're if you're renting an Airbnb when you go away, they have great tips usually on ter- on transportation. They'll let you know where the nearest airport is. They'll let you know whether or not you should be renting a car, and so just consider all of that when you're checking locations. Consider the peak times, uh, travel times. Again, if when deciding where to go. If you're not somebody who likes a lot of people and doesn't want to be around a lot of tourists, you might want to go during, um, uh, you know, a peak or less. Not, no, sorry. And what's the opposite of peak? What? Off season. Off season. <laughs> you what? might want to go to an off season uh, during an off season time. But even if you know, if so, if you've decided what time frame you want to go and you want to avoid the tourists, you might want to just stay outside the major cities. So sometimes yeah. it's staying outside We've the major that. cities. And then just doing, you can do a day trip in to see all those big sites that might be inside Rome or London or Paris, but stay a little bit outside to stay away from the crowd. So again, if you're considering where, think about the time of year you're going and whether or not it'll be busy in terms of where your destination is. And some places are we more popular at different times of year, right? We like to go to New York City in the fall because it's really not that... It's not super busy like as it is in the summer. Right. Where if you went to like Germany in October, yeah. you would end up with Oktoberfest crowds. And so you should be right. aware that that would be a, you know, a busy location at that time. Consider who you're traveling with. Kids are always a unique challenge. You know, you if you're going to a place that you're more focused on sightseeing, right. tourists, uh, you know, the, the historical stuff, museums. It might be a bit of a bummer for kids, so I know. you know we might, might want to fit in some fun stuff. There are places that we wanted to go that we we said, well, you know, our little guy who's six, he's too he's too young to go because we'd be trucking around all the time. We're not going to carry him, right? And, yeah, and it's I'm like, not carrying him. Yeah, consider the age of the kids or, or whomever <laughs> you're, even if, you know if you're if you're traveling with people who may have you know. Um, different uh limitations in terms of walking you know just consider all that when you're deciding where to go also you know consider the language if you're staying if you're going to a foreign country and you're staying in a more uh rural location chances are it may be uh, it may be more uh apt to speak the language of that country and not have as many people who are catering to tourists so in major cities, you tend to have people who are going to speak your language or speak, um, you know, right. a variety of languages to cater to the tourists. So if uh, if you're going to a more rural area, just make sure that communication is uh, not going to be an issue for you. And then sort of just some final tips in, in researching your locations. Lonely Planet is great. I think most people are aware of Lonely Planet books yeah. and they've got a website. You can search by their des- by destination. They'll give you some top sites and experiences. You can drill down by city and you can read recent articles uh, from people who have recently visited there. They've got videos. Historical uh, reference too, which is great yeah. of the place. YouTube is awesome for videos. We talked about this a little bit when we were talking about resort reviews, but they have great, uh, you know, overall, there's tons of bloggers who are out there, uh, video bloggers who are yep. doing uh, reviews of different locations. Walter's World is one of Yeah, we really enjoy that guy. He, go, he travels with his, with his uh, family. Yeah, it's he's really got cool. a family of four, and he's been traveling for decades, and it's really just straightforward stuff. Walter'sWorld.com, but he has, you can check him out on YouTube. He's got the do's and don'ts for all, pretty much yeah. every country you can think of he's been there. What not to do Just in a down-to-earth Korea. guy, and I, I really enjoy his, his reviews. So Walter'sWorld.com is definitely a good resource. Usually before we go to, I'll I'll check uh, Wiki. It's a great yeah. it's a great place to get a brief overview of the country, political structure, major religions, languages, and 
you know, it just, it, it's a great way to get quickly educated. Ultimately, when you're deciding where to go, just go with your gut. Yeah, go what, with your gut. What go. gets you most excited? You know, what do you, ex- what, what do you have on your bucket list that you want to cross off? Go someplace you really want to go and go there. So check us out on the next episode in this series, and we will uh, hopefully we, by then. Have we may decided. reveal where we're going yeah. if we decided. We hopefully we'll have decided by then, and we'll uh, fill you in on that. Thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. Till next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to visit InfoQuench.com to subscribe and catch up on past episodes. You can also check out InfoQuench on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Till next time. time.